Sit down, strap in, and don't touch that wong! The Orc Speed Freaks box is here finally from Games Workshop for Orktober. It has arrived. It is Orktober. We did we did get Orcs in Orktober, of course. Uh, this is its own self-contained game, but also includes, as you probably already know, a bunch of models in here that you can actually play in 40k as well. Now, exclusive to this kit, which by the way is $150. <laughs> and it's very, very heavy. You get the custom boosted blaster, two squads of orc war bikes. Here you can see there are different colors. They are actually cast in red and yellow plastic. And the shock jump dragster, which I, I think is probably the better of all of these here. I don't know. Maybe I reserve the right to backpedal at any time. But it is its own standalone game as well that comes with its fold out board, just like we saw with Kill Team. And also instructions, specific dice, a couple of pieces of terrain that you can paint up, and all the cards and accessories you need to actually play the game as well. Now, it says made in UK, manufactured and distributed in the UK. We've been seeing that a lot lately. We haven't seen any more made in China, so I don't know if the laws have changed. Just throwing it out there on assembled versus made in a particular country. I know in the past you were able to do that here in the US. You're made in the US if you bring all the parts in and assemble it here in the States. So I'm not sure if that is the same for the UK as well. Nobody's commented on it yet, so I don't know for sure. Here it runs down all of the items that are going to come in this box, but most importantly, I think, are these two that are exclusive to this. And then the following week, we will see the rest of the buggies coming out. At some point in the near future, as Games Workshop does like to do, they may release these as a standalone kit. Currently, the other buggies are $45, which kind of leads us down this whole discussion of GW pricing that we've been addressing over the past couple of videos, right? So real fast, before we unbox and start to build these exclusive models, I wanted to talk about GW's pricing because it has been apparent that they are working off of, at least from my opinion, two different sets of pricing here. So before we actually saw the confirmed price of the Speed Free box, we took a couple of context clues from what they had said on their website that there was a quote, Kraken value, which I think is colloquialism slang, for a good value, I don't know what that means, but eventually we kind of found out, I suppose, when it came to the Speed Freak box itself. So we do know it's 150, but here was what we had thought. They kind of worded it that it was a great place to start collecting your speed walk, right? And that was kind of interesting, so it put us down this path of just trying to figure out what we thought they would be. Now, at first we also thought they were on Night Titan bases, but these are actually not Night Titan bases. This is kind of a hybrid in between the Dread Knight base, AKA the Flyer base, the Storm Raven base, and the Night, base, the Night Titan base itself. So it's kind of a hybrid size, which is really interesting. We hadn't seen this before in the 40K side of things, I don't think. So the value of what comes in the box is two sets of war bikes, 8250, you know, divided by two is 4125. The two speed free vehicles, we were assuming that they would go for about $52 because the truck is 37 and the battle wagon is 66, right? So add all that together and you got a total estimated value of about 186.50, which, you know, with the box set being 150, that was very confusing because according to Games Workshop, there would be a value in here. Now we know now that the value of these buggies is $45, so it's actually less. But we also know that there's terrain that comes in here too, which, you know, the lowest amount of terrain we saw from the Sector Imperialis is $30. So you could make the assumption that it's $30. So you get about a $200 value, air quotes, if you're looking, you know, apples to apples, porting it over to Warhammer 40K. Now, while that, why that's important is because the pricing are so different on so many different boxes. Take, for instance, the recent Tooth and Claw box that contains Space Wolves, well, Space Wolf upgrades and a bunch of Primaris Marines, along with Gene Stealer Cult. Once you add up the values of all of these on both sides, actually one side of this box has the same amount of value as the whole Speed Freak box. When you add them both together, you get around $400 worth of value, give or take, which is double the, the value, approximately, of the Speed Freak box, 
and the same cost as the Speed Free Box, $150. So what makes these two kits different? Well, I wondered that same question and I kept going, I kept digging. Then I came to the Kill Team Core Game Box, which is currently sold out and Games Workshop ordered, was rumored to have ordered 36,000 of these individual box sets and completely sold through them in the first couple of weeks. So at $130, the value in here is, is mostly obvious. You get the manual, which they sold separately for 40, two different squads also valued at 40, the game board, the kill team cards uh, without the blank cards, and the Imperial Terrain, which they kind of sectioned up and it doesn't exactly build the same kind of kits. But once you kind of take some apples to apples comparisons and some halvesies, you get about a $250 value, which for $130 is not quite more uh, than double, which we saw with the Tooth and Claw, but it isn't quite less than double that we just saw with the Speed Freaks. So let's keep digging. Grandmaster Edition from Adeptus Titanicus came out, was rumored to have under 10,000 units produced, and it's completely sold out. It's $290, sure, which is a lot of money when you think about it for a starter, but you could split it with a friend and add another core rules and or for around $350, you would both be able to play. What makes this different, it's, well, besides its hefty price point at $290, is that you get about $410 worth of value in here, which again, isn't double value. It's less than double value, but it's not mm, less value and it's not putting almost a premium on the contents in here. So now we've got one more item to take a look at to draw some conclusions from. Last but certainly not least is the Necromunda Underhive Starter, which came out about this time last year in 2017. And while this is important of a comparison to make, whoops, apparently I posted this twice. Let's click on that. So this is an important comparison to make because for $130, I believe it was, the only thing you get in here model-wise is two of the Warbands and a little bit of terrain and the game board and a bunch of components which if you can excuse me is 125 which if you do some quick math on it you barely get back to the total of the actual kit itself in value so it's like oh man this one is par or less than par in value what gives what makes the where is the pricing matrix on all this stuff how can you have something that you get more than double value and then a couple weeks later, you get something that's like, mm, not even double value, but all throughout the year, you have all of these ranging values, which are, you know, can be confusing to new and old hobbyists alike. Now, personally, I think Games Workshop, given what I've just presented to you and my own personal opinions, I think Games Workshop puts a premium on model count and not necessarily models contained in the box, but think of it this way. How many models do you need to play the game that the box is intended for? I just showed you that with Necromunda, the pricing value really isn't there so much, right? Well, Necromunda, you only really need two Warbands worth of duders to play. There's no crossover with those guys over to Warhammer 40K or any of their other games. You're just going to buy the Necromunda model. Sure, you could proxy them or count as cultists or whatever, what have you you know, down the road, but that's not the real intent there, I don't think, on the back end. Now, when it comes to Titanicus, same thing. There's no crossover value. You only need so many models. A mana pool is basically five Titans themselves, and you don't, you don't really need to buy much more. So that kind of makes sense on that value pricing there. Whereas things like the Tooth and Claw, you get a whole bunch of models in there, and also you're gonna need a whole bunch more models to still play Warhammer 40K, depending on if you're even playing, it doesn't even matter if you're playing Space Marines or Gene Stealer Cult, you're still gonna need way more models, right? So then we come to this box here, and guess what? Same deal. You really don't need that many models to play Speed Freak. You need a couple buggies, they come with a sprue of terrain, uh, some war bikers. Now, sure, G Dub may flip the script and come out with next week's uh, buggies that are going to be sold separately, which aren't these two. These are exclusive to this kit, which also puts value on this kit for orc players to maybe pick it up because this is the only way to get it until they are re released by themselves. Usually they do that about a year later, give or take. Remember, we saw it with the Kalth Marines, we saw it with Prospero stuff. So, anyways, getting back to my point. You don't really need a whole lot of models to play in here. G-Dub could say, hey, 
those those new kits that are going to come out are going to be you know the new buggies are going to be speed freak for the game speed freak but also used in 40k or they might just be straight up 40k it's really hard to say at this point because we're so far out right but long story short you don't need that many models to play so therefore it seems like following the logic i just presented out you might not get that good of a deal on the value inside of the box now is all of this content that comes underneath it worth uh the premium price or worth that extra you know 50 or 60 bucks or so you get a game board you get all of these cards here damage cards custom job and a lot of people have compared this game to x-wing and, and armada and stuff you know what i'm not even going to really take a look at it to be quite honest because people have done a million out like how to play these already have their stuff painted and they're zooming around the battlefields there's tons of other channels you can see that stuff on i'm giving you the cold hard facts as i see them and you know some some tips for putting the models together you got dice you got all these you know game aids cards and things you get a free chapter of the beast arises remember that's that great series that just recently concluded and a, a whole bunch of origins and stuff in there like the, that's where the death watch came from you get your speed freaks rule book which you know looks to be laid out very well and there's a lot of development costs that went in here and everything like that i love it and of course instructions and then here's that weird hybrid base this is not the same size as a night titan base which is crazy and blows my mind so new hybrid oval base flyer dread knight size base night titan base right there so this is kind of a hybrid size we hadn't seen before in 40k to my knowledge and it's really interesting uh to see because i mean it, it made the buggies look a lot bigger at least i thought they were but hey that's that's what happens you get a bunch of uh tokens and the little you know how to put your command dice out and not get seen and all of the little punch out cards that i can't grab into here because it's like dropping bases on the floor you can never pick them up but chances are you already saw all of this stuff already and we don't really need to show it to you but what we are going to show you <laughs> is the new sprues well, let's get an idea of what we'll be looking at and take a look at the assembly guide because we're not going to have time to put these together today. I went too long, too hard in the paint, so to speak, on my rants. But that being said, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other channels out there that will be putting these together and showing you, you all the gotcha. Sometimes we can't get to it all. So here's the shock jump dragster. Now, uh, I think Games Workshop at some point said that some of the buggies, they would be plug and play and you could build up off of each each one where they had kind of interchangeable parts, so to speak. Now, I didn't see, just looking at the pictures and stuff, I didn't really see a whole lot of that. Um, it looked like, at least with the Shock Jump Dragster, there really wouldn't be a whole lot of interchangeable parts unless you're just talking about... Uh, the slots and things like this is where the engine goes on the back and maybe you could take that engine and put it in the top of another one that's coming out but for the most part it looks like it goes together you know pretty standard this isn't a push fit kit or anything like that uh, there are, there is going to be a bunch of detail that has sub assemblies like all the piping and stuff that goes on to here the engine is ginormously big it looks like most of the back rear section here and then the top stabilizer fin is uh is going to go on there so pretty standard stuff and you got some grots and stuff that hang off hang off i hang about the wheels are two different parts right there you might be able to change out the wheels judging by all of that uh, you know as far as as far as specific things so this is a 150 millimeter i'll have to write that down it's 105 170 is the night 170 by 105 is the night cool well now we know things we're all learning together so here's the custom boom blaster that looks like uh, somewhat you could probably paint some of these in a little bit of you know like you can keep the tires off prime on black put them you know put them on so you're not like wasting a lot of color if you're trying to do yellow you could do a lot of the armor keep the pilots off right or the drivers keep the driver guys off keep this big engine off the back like you wouldn't have to glue it in so you could paint it in sections or at least primer it in sections and probably airbrush it up and uh, in a go the engine block here looks like it's not plug and play it looks like it's actually part of the chassis overall and then speaking of chassis the left and right halves everything kind of glues together to give you kind of this armored scoop kind of bucket dragster thing right here and that kind of makes sense but again i'm not really seeing a lot of like plug and play kind of components here so maybe that was just something I read a little too far into because I'm just not seeing it in these kits yet. It might be in the buggies that are coming out here in the 
uh, in the near future, right? Now, as far as the rest of the stuff, it just tops go on, uh, drivers go in, but it looks like the drivers actually kind of get stuck in once you glue the roof on right there. And then the top cupola will house uh, the big gun, which could be painted separately, I suppose, if you wanted to paint it up, you know, steel primer it, and then the rest of the stuff's gonna be red. But it'd be pretty difficult to kind of do that differently with that front engine, it looks like, unless you don't have to glue that interface in right there. Uh, I would definitely, hmm, that's a tough one. You can't even do the tires separate either because it looks like it's just the caps go on to the back here and then the front tires are a little separate. So this one might be a little challenging to do it in stages modularly uh, as far as some folks, some airbrush artists might like to or folks that primer things differently. Uh, it may present a few challenges. Okay, so here's the dragster itself. It's one normal size sprue. Um, got a lot of detail. like. I, everything looks pretty sharp and pretty crisp i mean that's almost looks like wood grain panels on the bottom don't ask me it's orky technology i don't know why you have wood grain on the bottom of metal but apparently that's how it works it's only crazy if it doesn't work these are your engine parts here that are all going to stack together and then you've got the pipes and things on the back the stabilizer fins or the stabilizer supports there's some of the armaments Got your steering wheel, all your little tiny grots, which look to be the normal number of parts. So they're probably well detailed. Front scoop, cockpit area, and where are the buzzsaw parts? Oh yeah, here's the buzzsaw parts. So they go together separately. So overall, it looks pretty well detailed. I mean, pretty crisp. The studs are nice and crisp. Got good interior detail right there on all of the... Uh, all the orky glyphs and stuff and mm, I think it looks pretty good like no uh, looks like it would all go together and for the most part the mold lines are probably gonna get hidden although it will be difficult for the tires you may have to use some of that Vallejo plastic putty uh, to kind of putty those up because you may or they may be far enough inside that there is like an armor plate or something over the top that you wouldn't notice it but i doubt that on the dragster yeah on the dragster they're going to be exposed so unless it looks like let's see so what they might have done is see right here where there's it looks like there's a little line in the tire itself i think that's where this goes in so they actually hide it pretty well the the mold line right there or the gap so to speak so you might not even be noticeable which is really ingenious on the design team's part and last but certainly not least for this orc release i guess this is wave one of the orcs <laughs> the custom booma blaster that's the that's the shooter the big missile launcher thingy on the top again it's a full-size sprue it's not splittable down the middle uh, it's cast in red plastic, of course, so you can tell your teams apart on, or tell your models apart from your opponents in Speed Free Game. This side doesn't really give us a whole lot of the look at the detail, I'm afraid. It looks to be the bottoms of most of these components, but you can see some, some speed gauges and stuff uh, right there, which is pretty neat to see. Let's see if we can get a little bit of light on there. There we go, the nice uh, speed gauges and things. And then on the front, when we flip it over, a lot more detail there. Engine blocks, looks like a grot kind of pilot. The grots are in multiple parts. It almost looks like when you glue those together, there'll be natural uh, gaps for the most part. It might not have to do too much filling. And here's the big gun. The tires are definitely very well detailed. Again, remember that your tire is actually molded into the fairing here. Uh, and it looks like there's no two second part there. So it's going to be pretty difficult. You may have to fill those tires or do some, um, just make sure you use some thin cement. It does have little studs right there for them to lock into, but I definitely recommend, uh, using thin cement or glue from Tamiya, which is pretty good stuff. I use this right here, extra thin cement. And then don't forget, uh, any gaps can easily be filled with a Vallejo plastic putty, which in my opinion is way better than liquid green stuff or just green stuff itself. Dries rock hard in about three hours and you can scrape away the excess above or, be, or, or, or around whatever gap you're trying to fill. So detail wise, 
It looks pretty good. I mean, you got nice little wrappings, chain detail. Even the steering wheel looks like it's made out of chain right there. That's pretty neat. Uh, so lots and lots of cool detail here. And they don't look too shabby on assembly time. I would probably put this at maybe about a half an hour once you clip down everything, kind of clean them up. It looks like there would be some flash, but the flash for the most part's on the the planes that won't be seen or glued together and get it all trimmed up. I'd probably say about half an hour for each uh, vehicle right there. So that is the last one we're gonna take a look at today. So overall, I hope you enjoyed our musings on potential price uh, calculations that Games Workshop uses for all of these box games. Cause I know sometimes initially we get very excited about these boxes and we're like, oh, we're gonna save a ton of money. We're gonna you know, get all these things and I'm gonna buy all these and then I'm gonna have an army. And sometimes that doesn't necessarily pan out and it can lead to some real feel badsies. And sometimes it's great and you can split it with a friend and you can get, you know, a chunk of your army taken care of right in one go. And you and your friend can kind of expand your collections. This doesn't seem to be one of those kits. This is kind of the precursor like we saw with uh, perhaps you could make the argument that, uh, you know, the Space Wolf box coming out before the Space Wolf Codex is kind of a precursor to maybe a big starter box with an eclectic mix of factions or perhaps just a straight faction box of some kind coming out before a Codex release or a Codex update that kind of gives uh, some supplemental purchase power or things to purchase for customers for that particular faction. You know, we've got so many models out now for each faction, they don't necessarily need a whole lot more. I mean, this was really cool to see these speed freaks and these buggies and the war bosses, and it's probably a long time coming. But to be honest, like, that's probably all that's gonna come out. And they leave the door open to expansions and things with Gasgill in the future, which is pretty cool. But at the end of the day, um, they're kind of just putting out stuff that maybe should have already been done, I suppose. But long story short, those are our thoughts on the pricing. I think overall these new models look great. They seem to be very, very kind of forward thinking as far as their construction and things. Don't see the modular ability or the ability to kind of cobble two kits together uh, very easily and make a new one, at least out of the stuff that comes in here. So that's it for this one, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know your thoughts on the pricing on these starters. Maybe some of the starters you'd like to see, some of the models you'd like to see come out in the near future from Games Workshop or per perhaps, you know, future campaign editions and things. I'm sure, you know, once, uh, at some point, we'll eventually have all combinations of things, but we're not there quite yet. So make sure you hit subscribe, turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on all our videos. Spiky bits.